Are we good, guys? Coach, when I go for the stuff, there's nothing to say. Yeah, I mean, first of all, um, hats off to Clemson again. You know, that's a tremendous program, uh, and that's still not lost uh, on anyone in this building. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, at times, they really outplayed us tonight, and we were able to make enough plays to win. Um, thank you to Duke and to the students and to the fans. Uh, what an amazing atmosphere that was for Duke football. I think that carried us, you know, at the times when we were having to really dig our heels in and find ways to make plays. Uh, having that stadium look like that and having those people look like that uh, is something that, that continues to drive us. And so thank you all for coming out. We need you guys all year. Uh, we need you to continue to support this team. And then, you know, to our team, uh, I just told them this in the locker room, uh, it's a testimony to what you can accomplish if you put yourselves together and you're willing to give a lot to an organization. These kids work so hard. Um, they put so much into this thing, uh, and they just continue to fight and come together to be successful. And so uh, really, really happy for those guys, really happy for what they accomplished, uh, really happy for this night. And, and, you know, I'll finish like you guys will expect to, that, you know, that's, that's one win, and we still got a lot more to play. Yeah, you know, I don't know that we slowed them down at times. It didn't feel like it. I felt like we were very resilient. Um, felt like, you know, we got on our heels quite a bit in the second half, um, but we kept battling, you know, and we talk a lot about red zone touchdowns and playing red zone defense and how important that is to winning football games, uh, and we did. You know, we just kept fighting on a lot of those drives in the second half, and, and you know, we got to stop, and we brought, or I don't know if we altered the field goal or what happened on the miss. I have to watch the tape. Uh, we had two turnovers down there, uh, which were critical, and then the one we were able to scoop up and really flip the field. And so, you know, in a half where I felt like we were a little bit on our heels, you know, we were able to pitch a shutout, right? And that's just a testimony to the character of our kids and how much they continue to battle. Mike, it seemed like the second half was a lot cleaner than the first in terms of mental mistakes. What was the key to cleaning those things up? Yeah, I think just relaxing. You know, I think that was the biggest, the biggest fear coming into this game was, you know, that team plays on this stage eight, nine times a year. Uh, our kids have not played on that stage one time in their career. And that was probably the biggest thing for, for me from an angst standpoint coming in was just trying to get them to relax. And, and we spent a lot of time on that, trying to talk them through that all week um, to just come out and play their game. And I think maybe at times in the first half, we got away from that. And, and I think coming in at halftime and just regrouping and feeling like, okay, we're in this, we can play with these guys. You know, this is going to be a back and forth type of game. I think it just settled them in and they were able to come out and execute a little bit cleaner in the second half. What's your view of Riley's touchdown run there early in the second half? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what that kid continues to do, right? It's, it's his ability to elevate at the right moment, at the right time when we need him, right? And, and um, you know, we called the play. I don't think we blocked it real good. I think they were in a really good look. And uh, he breaks the tackle, and he scores a touchdown, right? And, and that's just what that kid does. He's such a competitor. Um, he puts this team on his shoulders, and he drives them forward. Um, you know, and he'll come in and tell you there's a lot he's got to clean up too. But, um, man, when it's time to step up and make plays, that kid's done it since the day I got here. Mike, did you guys see something on their field goal protections, or was that just your guys making plays? No, I mean, we, we put a huge emphasis on it this offseason because I thought we were really bad at it last year. And so it was something we really emphasized a lot was we had to be better. Um, so I don't know that we necessarily felt like there was a weakness from them. We just felt like we had to be much better at that. And so it was good to see us go out and execute something that we had spent an awful lot of time on this offseason. You mentioned yeah. the red zone defense. And were you anticipating being that dominant in, when, whenever Clemson got it inside that inside the red zone? Were you anticipating you guys forced the turnovers you did, the field goal block, and all that? No, I was hoping we wouldn't be in the red zone defense. I was hoping we'd stop them before they got down there. But no, I mean, we, we spent a lot of time on situational football, and and you know we talk about. Uh, having to continue to play and fight, right? And that was one of the big things that people asked me when I got here was, you know, will this team compete? Will this team fight? Will this team play hard for four quarters? Like, absolutely, yes. You know, they will not lay down. And that's what they're trained to do. And so, um, you know, we believe in our conditioning. We believe in our physicality. We believe that we know how to execute in those areas of the field. We certainly would prefer not to be down there uh, as much as we were, but um, you know those plays ultimately won us a football game. Mike, this is a historic upset, first time since '89. You guys, top ten team. But when I say that word upset, watching it, it didn't feel like it. it. Looked like you guys were just better. I mean, how do you compartmentalize 
what just happened in regards to what people are going to talk about this game as? Yeah, I mean, we, we all this outside stuff is for you guys. It really is. I don't mean that in any kind of bad way, but like we certainly didn't come into this game talking about an upset. We didn't come into this game talking about we had to do this and that to pull this amazing thing off. We just talked about playing Duke football. And I think people have a really hard time understanding that a group of kids can really come together and work extremely hard and change who they are and change what they're all about. And that's what these kids have done. And, and that doesn't show up in stats or, or whatever causes us to be a major up or underdog or whatever else this was about a major upset. Um, and so we believe that we do the things we need to do to give ourselves a chance to win every game we play. And, and that's now, what, 15 games or 14 games that, that's been the case. We've had an opportunity in every game this team has gone out there to win the football game. And we certainly didn't anticipate tonight would be any different. You ever going to challenge us like, like Dion after? Uh, no. <laughs> Just given the muff punt and the fumbles and the penalties, how do you process the lopsidedness? Um, yeah, that, that we're 1-0, and, and we got a lot of things to get better at before we play another game, and we don't have a lot of time to do it. I mean, that's honestly how I process tonight. Um, you know, we came into this game believing we could win the football game. We came into this game believing that if we played the way we were capable of, we would get the result that we wanted, um, and we did. And, and now, you know, some of the biggest improvement that happens in college football is between game one and game two. And a lot of teams in the country get seven days to do that. A lot of teams get nine days to do it. Uh, we get five. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we're not going to get a ton of sleep tonight. And so, you know, we're going to have a challenge getting us back together and getting ourselves ready to go and um, getting back on the field. And because we got a lot of things that we have to clean up for this team to get where we want to go. Let me ask you about Jordan Woodward. He made some big mistakes in the first half. Turns back has a huge second half. You mentioned resiliency. Can you talk about his resiliency, the confidence that your coaches had in giving the ball to him, putting it in his hand to give him a chance to make the yeah, he, he didn't fumble. Jack Moore fumbled at the end oh, of the half. So, but we have confidence in all those guys. Okay. I mean, we have confidence in all those guys. And, you know, uh, Jalen Calhoun's our punt returner. He's going to continue to be our punt returner. Um, we need him to make a better decision and pick that up clean. Um, you know, Jack Moore's got to take care of the ball. Samir Hagan's got to take care of the ball. But, um, you know, we, we don't lose faith in who we are, or who our guys are, just when they make mistakes. You know, we just gotta we gotta clean that stuff up and play better. How, how important is a win like this to where you want to take this program, and, and the fact that you can show the guys like you can play with everybody? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's important on the outside. Right? It's important on the outside because I think it makes people believe a little bit more what we've been saying since the day I got here. Right? What we've been saying internally is is this is what Duke football is capable of. We've never ever wavered, wavered from that at all. Um, I think what it says now to people on the outside is they get a little validation that it's possible, right? And in this day and age, we got to find ways to validate what we say, and, and that's what it is. And um, yeah, I promise you internally, um, we're one and oh, and, and that's honestly where we're at as a football program. That's the first field storming at Wallace Wade for a long time. Being on the field, just walk us through what that was like. Yeah, I mean, the, from from the beginning when we came out of the tunnel, you know, we asked our students to get there early. We asked them to be rowdy. We asked them to be involved. Um, we talked about trying to turn this into a Cameron type environment in the fall. And man, were they awesome tonight! I mean, they were absolutely awesome. And so to see them rewarded, getting to storm the field, I mean, that's a moment and a memory. Um, that's what college football should be about, right? And then I don't know if we're going to get fined for that one, Nina, or not. But, um, you know, that's just one of those things that um, that's what college football on Saturday should be. It should be a great gathering place for a university. It should be a great environment. It should be a great place where everybody can come and enjoy football. And, and that's coming at Duke. And so we were really excited with that. Mike, are you picking the targeting call? Did you think that they were going to get a first down out of that initially and then re sort of release? Yeah, yeah, I was I was relieved because um, it's funny we had the same play last year against Georgia Tech, and and they didn't call it a dead ball, and so I guess what they what they deemed was he was down and it was a dead ball, and so it happened pretty quick though. Once once they came over, they kind of explained that that's what it was, and the review was targeting or no targeting, so we knew we had the ball. Um, it just was a matter of whether or not Cam was going to be in the game still. You, from the very beginning, you prioritized conditioning. Your defense is on the field an awful lot today and brutally hot conditions. Is, does this validate that emphasis on conditioning? They were able to stay up there and make those plays? 
right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's why you train the way we train. It's why we do the things that we do in the summer. And, and I think the other thing that I hope people notice was how much we rotated. I think everybody keeps talking about our depth and, and how come we don't have enough of this or enough of that. Uh, we rotated bodies as much as those guys did tonight. And we rotated eight, nine guys across the defensive line. We rotated four linebackers. We had probably eight, nine guys playing the secondary. Um, we were able to rotate enough. And I think that played a big role as well um, because we were able to keep our guys fresh and not let them wear us down. How much difference did your transfer defensive back make tonight? Sharon, do you play? Did yeah, you hard, that, that stuff's hard to see, say, see from the sideline, Steve. I mean, obviously, we got a lot of confidence in those guys. Um, they've, they've become really good players. You know, Jeremiah Lewis showed up and made a bunch of plays as well tonight. And so, um, you know, I got to go back and watch the tape to say specifically how much they impacted the game. But um, certainly that's three contributors that made big plays tonight at different times. You know, Miles made the play on the post. Al made the last breakup for sure. Al brought some pressure. I know he got some rushes on the quarterback. Um, Jeremiah Lewis made a couple plays, and then he ran down on the breakout run, uh, ran the kid down, and that was able to get us in, in a situation where they missed the field goal. Um, and so all three of those guys certainly had impactful plays. You kind of hinted at it, but how much time are you going to take to enjoy this one since it's Monday? Probably none. No, it's, it's um, a joke a little bit. You know, it's listen, it's a really cool thing. It's great for our kids. I'm really, really happy for them. Um, because they need this, right? They need to know that what they're doing and everything that they're pouring into this thing is going to get them the results, right? And, and for them to do what they do and have done it since the day I got here, um, results help that, right? It helps get them continuing to go and continuing to roll. Um, I'm a football coach, right? I'm a football coach, and I know we got another game coming Saturday. And so, you know, I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for their moment. Um, that's where we're at. Yeah, I thought he was great inside the 10 and not as good between the 20s. No, I mean, Tyler's awesome. I mean, Tyler's awesome. I mean, he, you know, to see the amount of work that he put into this plan, I mean, we watched, he watched three years worth of Garrett Riley because um, we didn't really know um, what that was going to look like. You know, some of that offense was Garrett Riley SMU um, his first year, his second year. And so I think we had our kids really well prepared for what we were going to see um, without really truly knowing what, that was really going to be about because you didn't know how they were going to piece that offense together. And so, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's awesome. Is that normal three years worth? Um, or just for context, so I understand, I'm trying to understand. It seems like a lot, but. It's probably a lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Despite your guys' miscues, you won the turnover battle again. Do you feel like the defense has gotten better at forcing turnovers since yeah. last year? And is that, is that still like so important to, to winning a football game? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I mean, just look at it, right? In the in the first half, we got down there twice. We didn't score touchdowns. We lost the turnover battle 2 nothing, and you go into halftime and we're losing. Right? Then the second half comes around. We win the turnover battle. We don't allow them to score touchdowns in the red zone. We score touchdowns in the red zone, and we win the second half, what, 22 to nothing, right? And so those things that we talk about are the things that win football games. That's what we spend all of our time emphasizing, and that doesn't mean that you're going to always get it right. I mean, we didn't emphasize fumbles any more or less between the first half and the second half. But that execution and the critical piece of that in the game is, is what ultimately wins and loses football games. And so we spend so much time on it because if we get those things right, that's ultimately the formula for winning. Coach, can you talk about the collaboration with the basketball program? Um, I mean, it just seems like you've really embraced it rather than resent it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, listen, I said it from the day I got here. We have a phenomenal basketball program, and, and that's not anything to shy away from. Like, I I'm, I'm love going to Cameron. I love watching games. I'm honored that Coach K got a chance to meet him and spend some time with him. I'm, I'm excited that I've got a great relationship with John Shire and Carol Lawson. Like, we don't – we're Duke, and we're Duke Athletics. And, and everything I've said since the day I got here was we have a lot of excellent programs. We just need to elevate football to get to that level. And so – you know, we look at Cameron as what we want Wallace Wade to be. We look at their program as what we want our football program to be. And for me, 
it's a tr it's a it's a path to success, right? When you can look at an athletic department and say, okay, you know, this program's figured it out, this program's figured it out, you know, and, and it takes commitment, right? It takes commitment from the university, and we got that, and it takes commitment commitment from the administration and alignment and all of those things that are so critical. Um, but when you see what those programs are capable of, it allows you to believe that that's what we can do in football as well. Just curious, Coach, are you picking up the tab if you guys do get fined for the uh, well, I don't know. We'll talk and we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. But appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you.